everyone. Welcome back to Build. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper, and today I'm sitting down with Taylor Schilling. She's starring in the new film, The Prodigy, as Sarah, a mother whose young son, Miles, starts exhibiting disturbing behavior after an evil force overtakes him. Fearing for her safety and her family's safety, Sarah must choose between her maternal instinct to love and protect Miles and the growing fear that he can no longer be trusted. Put your hands together for Taylor Schilling. I think the answer to that question is like maybe. It maybe depends. it depends. I liked your your reaction to that. It depends. It depends. Well, first I go uh, no, uh, no. <laughs> Miles, you are special. You're very special. That's a really nice way to put it. Yeah. Um, I got to uh, obviously screen this movie. Yeah. I have to start by telling you that I am a scaredy cat and I like suck at scary movies. Yeah, yeah. I chose to watch this in a very crowded office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was fun for my coworkers yeah. because my yeah. reactions <laughs> were very over the top. Yeah. I mean, this is a scary movie and probably the best birth control I could ever um, <laughs> have experienced. So what drew you to the prodigy? Well, when I read it, um, the last, like the last, the last third of the movie when Sarah really shifts into gear and starts to make some, she, this woman makes some really wild choices to protect her son. And she's a fascinating character. She's really interesting. I mean, it's very interesting. And she really is going through the ringer trying to sort out what's happening to her kid. Cause it's not crystal clear, but it's scary. Mm -hmm. It's really scary. I mean, it was scary to kind of make it and it was scary to watch that. It's all scary. Yeah, you uh, you mentioned Sarah, and I do I did love the film because um, with so many thrillers, you sort of feel like you know how it's gonna end, and you yes. kind of feel like you know what the mother's going to do. Right. And Sarah was constantly full of surprises. Right. So how fun was that to, to get to play that? She's not this one note. She's really got a lot going on. No, she's incredibly ferocious. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I could make the decisions she made to protect Miles, or to try to save her son, and. There's something inside of her that's equally as out there as whatever's inside of her kid. I mean, she's a powerful, powerful, powerful mama warrior. Um, and a little scary. Her choices are a little scary, too. But that was really what uh, was the clincher for me, kind of how when she does... <laughs> I, it's hard not to. Like, I know it's hard not like, to talk about it. It's like I'm not, uh, you know. Yo, guys, it like, gets real. It gets really it intense. It gets really with her. real. Yeah. Um, and so for you reading this script, what did were there moments that really jumped out? Like, do you get did you get scared reading it, and you knew like this was going to actually be a? I did. I think that that notion of losing control of yourself from the. I mean, I constantly have my own fear of not being able to trust my own reality or losing your mind, not being able, not seeing straight, or um, it's terrifying. Yeah. I mean, and in a way, that's a form of possession. Not that this is a film about possession, it's not, it's, <laughs> that's not what it's about. But um, it really played on that for me. Because not only is, has Miles lost the ability to think for himself, what every other character experiencing around him can't tell if what they're seeing is real or not. And for me, that's one of my personal greatest fears, to sort of lose it, to sort of go off the deep end. And in a, in a way, she's, she has to, this woman has to choose that she's not going off the deep end and that she believes in herself, yeah. which is powerful. When everyone else around you is saying, uh-uh, 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 just let this go. And she keeps listening to herself. So it's, I guess that's two things, but um, yeah. It is super conflicting because as a mother, she's trying to follow her gut. Absolutely. But then obviously this kid is like kind of a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, that kid sucks. Get rid of him. But I don't it's know like, why it makes me giggle. But it's like it does. Yeah, kid, he is. And he's literally a monster. Right, she can't. <laughs> but and I also think that the train that she gets on for most, I'm not a parent, but a lot of the parents, I know it, do, it does not seem that far outside the realm of possibility to go this far far down a path to protect your child and to advocate for your kid. And the responsibility that Sarah feels saddled with to take care of her son is everybody, I think most parents, I think parents yeah. feel that way. And that being a parent is like this thankless kind of, you know, you have to do it no matter what, even if well, you Well, yeah. Especially in this. Yeah, you know, in this situation. She's giving a lot, not getting a lot back. Not getting a lot back. <laughs> it's not a very reciprocal relationship. Yeah. Sarah's not receiving a lot of 
a lot of uh, fruits. There are a lot of fruits of her labor. Exactly. I Literally. S- <laughs> well played. Anyway, yes. Um, I saw that the Alamo Draft House, actually, I don't know if you've heard about this, they did a uh, private screening for expectant mothers yeah. of this movie. <laughs> Which I yeah. thought was the most messed up thing I had read in a long time. They yeah. filled the theater with a bunch of pregnant women and made yeah. them watch a story about a child who was like a bad egg. I know. <laughs> I know. And then uh, they all came. It was such good sport. They showed up. To show up and see it. But I, yeah. I mean, it seems like watching a, watching a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, truly, if you're a pregnant woman. That could I would, become a reality. Yeah. Ugh, yes. Yeah. I know. I want to talk about how you prep for this role because um, there are definitely moments where you have to scream and you let out these like guttural screams and kind of prepare to like. Re- I want to know how you prepare to like ramp it up to that level. Like, mm. did you practice screaming like in a mirror? Like, how did you get it right? How did I? Well, no, no? but I do, I think that there's a lot of um, the circumstances get so heightened in this movie, which is so, which is one of the things that made making a horror movie so exciting was because you it gets it's so outside the bounds of reality it's so heightened what we're doing I mean it that stuff starts happening that you just it's fun it's fun to play it feels a little bit like really playing pretend it was really I really had a good time making this movie I really had like I I really loved it I loved a little kid and I um, but yes, in terms of preparation, I mean, I spoke with a lot of parents and, uh, and some parents with um, kids with special needs and, and sort of some developmental um, differences and kind of the, the inner scaffolding um, it takes to shepherd a child like that through the world. And really, th- it's a... It's heroic. I mean, there are really some heroic, you know, I think motherhood in and out of itself is one of the most um, heroic and remarkable things someone can do with their lives. And particularly some of these moms I talk to who are really, in this spectacular way, helping their kids blossom. Yeah. And other people may not see see it, but they do. That's they so are holding their kid, They're, they, they see it for their child. Yeah. That's so interesting that that's what you looked at, and that makes so much sense. It's like a parent advocating. I mean, obviously the situations are very different, but yes. yeah, very different, <laughs> <laughs> very different. But I mean, I think fundamentally in this situation, she doesn't know it's what's going on, and she's really seeing her kid as you know needing extra attention, and um, she wants him to blossom. She wants him to thrive, and that's all. That's all she is looking for. So it was really interesting to talk to some, to talk to some moms. And some dads who have been on that on that journey. You mentioned the little boy, uh, the little actor Jackson. Yeah. Um, He's this really good, kid is huh? really really good. Yeah. What was it like playing with him? Because obviously, I'm sure he's hopefully like a normal, well-adjusted kid in real yeah. life, but he's like pretty creepy uh, in yeah. all the scenes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never worked with a child like Jackson before. He. We had like a week of prep and usually we do things like that and you like, we get dinner and lunch and um, he and I went to the aquarium a bunch. He's really into sea life and, uh, and he, he's just a really normal little kid and can, you know, tell, he, I learned all, we learned all about these like punching shrimp. Apparently there, he taught me about shrimp that if you get punched by a shrimp, you like go down. He's really smart and he's really into this kind of stuff. Um, and, it, and making up dances and playing, and then something clicks over in him while he's working, and it's effortless. He's not working at it. It was really a lesson for me as an actor, the amount of play he brought to it and ease. Um, he, he's, I was really blown away by him. And then immediately it turns off, and we're back to engaging and playing and making up dances and talking about the punching shrimp, like we talked about you know, for a while. So he's, um, and he's really good. And it was it was equally as stunning to watch the film and watch his work as it was to work with him. You know, uh, he yes, he's really I'm, he's a very cool kid. He is. I mean, obviously he has plenty of dialogue, but a lot of his acting is you know the intense looks and stares yeah. and just sort of this physical thing that he transforms into. Yeah. And it's like wow, that kid's really a powerful. Yeah, he's actor. doing like a lot of internal work. Yeah. It's not about jokes and words he's really he's transforming he transformed so this is your first like thriller kind of scary 
yeah. film, right? Oh, sure, yeah. Do you want to do more? Um, like this, yeah. I mean, this was so fun. Absolutely. I mean, I think that there's something... It's really fun to see. I, my hope is that people just get a kick out of this, and it's fun to watch, because it is fun to watch. It's such a visceral experience to go see a movie like this. Mm -hmm. It's And it's good, and it's tight, and it's... Uh, it's it's well told. So of course, yeah. I think what I'm looking for right now more than anything are just stories and directors that I want to that I want to tell. And this was one that was that was fun. Yeah, because now you yeah. have uh, maybe a little more time to pick different projects because yes. is a new black is officially in its final season. Yeah. Um, have you guys finished taping it, or are you still? We're still shooting. We just we have a, a little bit more, and then we're done. Yeah. I know it's the end of an era for it, me. Truly. I mean, I think for a lot of people, and that show really was the first of its kind. Netflix's yeah. big hit. I mean, yeah. everybody watched it and it has yeah. just stayed so consistent. And I yeah. think even gotten better in that last season. Yeah, um, the last one. Yeah, the last season yeah. where everything really got. And it left in such this moment where we have issues of immigration. Yeah. And and then Piper's finally getting out. Yes. And so going into this season, what can you tell us about her journey? Because I know the script kind of went away from the real Piper's story. Well, way far right. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm curious. The Piper that we are playing now, I always almost feel like I want to give a, um, you know, give a disclaimer because Piper Kerman is one of the foremost um, prison reform advocates in the country and is a magnificent specimen of integrity and grace and um she's amazing yeah. um yeah so piper chapman my character on orange is the new black is a is far removed yeah. from piper kerman um but i think what's really beautiful is genji and her really fantastic genji cohen who created the show and her really incredible team of writers are continuing to make you use it as a platform to tell stories that need visibility that need extra voice. They're amplifying, they're really using their voice to amplify the voiceless. So I think definitely immigration and uh, detention centers continue to be a major theme in year seven. And I, I, to their credit, I think that the writers are able to kind of um, be agile. And they sort of were, they were willing to, to move stories around to deal with the issues that we're dealing with together as a country. Yes. So it's, it's yes. Yeah. yeah. Even with Tasty pleading to a crime that she didn't commit, I mean, all of those things are very much reflecting yes. what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought that last season was really great and really, really smart. Yeah. And I think what one thing I really love about the show is the cast. Yeah. Um, for several different reasons, but really is because when I look at all of you guys out in the world, it's you are all advocates in your own way for your yeah. own causes. And it's one. Of, it's something very unique about your cast is Isn't that it? everybody seems to be very in touch and like locked into what's going on. Yeah, I yeah. It's funny because I think for us as a group, which is, this is just like thanking my lucky stars, which I am so grateful for, but it's sort of what's accepted on our set. Yeah. It's the culture and it's the norm. And so um, that's the culture that we've created. And I think it was created from the top down, but um, yeah, and it's kind of like, what are you involved in? What are you doing? And we support each other. But it's also a moment in time where I think, you know, it's so. It's just it's 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 always important to use your voice. And right now, there's you know even more, exactly, even more reason to. And you mentioned supporting each other. Um, and I always see, like I saw you guys all at Natasha's uh, series premiere. Oh my gosh, and the show is and, so good. And it's Russian Doll, so good. It's amazing. It is Russian so good. Doll is right? amazing. It's incredible, yeah. Um, so talk to me about how important it is for you to have this community of women that is just really riding for you and supporting you. And it seems like you guys really lift each other up. And I would imagine, yeah. again, that that's not something that's totally normal on every set. Well, I can't speak to any other set because I've never been on any other set. But um, I think that... I think we flourish in community and I have different communities and my my orange family is certainly an important one huge and I think that that's what uh at the end of the day the takeaway of the show is really for me personally the impact it has on my personal life it's uh you know my life has been imprinted with these relationships forever forever changed but um 
Yeah, we lift, it's like rising tides. We lift together, we grow together. I think that's one of the reasons why, why your fans are so committed and to the show yeah. and because I think it's because of you guys. Yeah, I think it's a group of really good people. Yeah. It's just a group, the cast, the cast, the cast is solid. It's just a, it's a group of really good women with every, and everyone, um, everyone has the ability to zoom out, you know, to see the landscape where we're living, what we're living through as a whole and rather than kind of descend into your own personal madness, which can happen, it happens to everyone. Everyone does that, but uh, so yeah, it's, it's so nice. Cool. It's yeah. very cool. I well, I'm very a fortunate. huge fan. I can't wait to see the final season. Uh, do you have any like hopes and dreams for Piper? I just hope that Piper, as we say goodbye to Piper, that she, um, I'd love for Piper to find her voice and be able to settle, settle into that. And I wish her peace in, you know, as we, in, in, I hope she finds her voice and she settles and she finds her own core in, and she can rest in perpetuity. But uh, I, look, I look for her to, to trust herself and, and uh, yeah, and, and I wish her well. I do too. Yeah, I do. Before we get out of here, we have a couple questions. For yes, the yes, yes. That's um, actually, first we have a question from Twitter. Uh, Poetic Piper wants to know How is Sarah's personality different from other characters you've played, such as Piper in Orange is the New Black or Beth in The Lucky One? Mm. Well, uh, I think that Sarah, Sarah is, Sarah's, Sarah's core is. Um, is a fighter and she is so ferociously on her own journey. And um, what I love about Sarah is that that's sort of embedded in this soft, cozy mom. And um, that's really different than all of the characters I've played. I mean, she, there is a, a raw fighter in the middle of, uh, in Sarah's spine. So, um, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. You guys will know exactly what she means when you see this movie. She, yeah. like, goes for it. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah does. Yeah, she time. definitely does. And it's wrapped in this, like, softness and nurturing and real mama bear. Um, yeah, she's interesting. Next question from Baby Duck 99 If you could give a piece of advice to your younger self, what would it be? Hmm... I think it would be two parts. I think it would be to just fully accept myself. If I could practice some radical acceptance as a younger person, I think that would have stood me in good stead. And yeah, and also I wish I wish I'd known as a as a younger person to to I I battled so much and I mean I still do with so much insecurity and self uh, self-recrimination and to take a step back a little bit to relax. Yeah, acceptance. I think that's what I would go with. That's such a common one and I also feel like it's something that like just comes with age sometimes. Yeah, you know? I agree. I really agree. You're like, oh, I wish I would have known this at 18. But like, Yeah, but it's also yeah. kind of the thing that helps you like jump and leap and be so rabid about some things. So, yes. Get it. And two questions from the audience. Who do we have first? Hi. Um, Hi. So I know you've done your fair share of like crazy movies. So we had The Overnight and Take Me. Definitely yes. crazy. So this one's a lot different than that. So yes. since it's like a horror slash thriller film, I want to know what surprised you about filming that you like really liked in general or just something that surprised you? Yeah. Well, one thing that I found that I really loved about making this movie was the um, the intensity of the circumstances, which feel kind of on the surface like something that we might not be able to relate to in our day-to-day -day life, that it might be a more challenging role to play, or um, actually were so easy and it was so fun. It was sort of like being able to take the training wheels off for the first time and just sort of cruise. And that's, I haven't really had an opportunity to do much of that in film work or TV work. So um, that was surprising and also really enjoyable to just uh, play in such an outsized world of 
reincarnation and kids and, you know, such high stakes. Next question. Thank, Thank you. Hi, um, I'm in the theater program at Fordham right oh, now, awesome. studying stage management. Yeah. And I just wanted to know what, if anything, that you learned in your training at Fordham that you still carry with you today. Wow, that's amazing. Say hi to everybody. I went to Fordham University yeah, and studied yeah. theater before I went to uh, NYU. And um, I, you know, there was this teacher there named Larry Sakharow, Sakharow, and he took me under his wing, and I wouldn't have gone to college if he, I had roll bad grades in high school. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he really, 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 really bad. And I probably wouldn't have gone to college if this guy hadn't been like, uh, you're great. But you need to check in with me, and you need to maintain this GPA. But I was great once I was happy and sort of able to do my thing. Uh, but to risk. I learned a lot about risking at Fordham. And I learned a tremendous amount about the importance of um, b your body, body connection, and making choices from, uh, from here rather than here. It was a, yeah, it was a beautiful program. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, this movie is real scary. <laughs> real scary. I would suggest that you guys take some friends with you to hold your hands or watch it in a crowded office. It's I really do. scary. I feel like we need to put like a warning. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's really scary. This is going to make you fear having children, okay? <laughs> I'm not joking. Yeah. If you want to feel it like I feel, check out The Prodigy. It's in theaters on February 8th. Give it yeah. up for Taylor Schilling. Thank you for having yeah. me. That was really sweet. Thank you. Thank you.